brains or age, age things you might be in. In uh, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6, let me read you a few words that the Apostle Paul said. Verse 6, I am, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering. The time has come for my departure, and I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not me only, but also all of those who longed for his appearing. So this is the last book that Paul wrote before he went to heaven. And uh, he's sharing some words that you might feel appropriate uh, for you today if you're about to graduate. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. <laughs> I'm even squeezed a little bit this year. You know, um, it's not bad to be squeezed. You just got to remember to go back and get filled up the next day. So you get squeezed again. And think of, if you think of your life, you're sort of like a sponge. You know, sponges can only absorb so much before they got to get squeezed. And too much of what we call normal Christianity, people just keep absorbing and keep absorbing and they never get squeezed. And when you get squeezed, that's when the blessing comes out on other people. So when you've gotten squeezed this year, other people have benefited. Other people have been blessed. A lot of people just sit in church week after week, just go, just fill me up, Lord, just fill me up. He's like, man, I don't have, there's no more room. Get squeezed a little bit so I can fill you back up. This is part of life. Lord, squeeze me today. Let somebody get blessed by something that comes out of me. And we go back to him in desperation. Fill me up again. How many have been filled up a few times this year? So you got filled, you got squeezed, you got filled, you got squeezed, and, and now... It's time to get filled again so you can get squeezed again. And uh, hopefully, this is how I want to go. When I die, the moment I die, I want to be squeezed the amount, the full amount so I have not one drop left in me to give. Not one piece of love, not one more sermon, not one more hug. It's all been squeezed out. Everything that could possibly come out of me that would bless somebody else or give honor to Jesus. How many would join me in that kind of commitment? <laughs> Now, um, when you think about what we're here to do, this is a commencement ceremony, a graduation ceremony. And some uh, school systems start graduation ceremonies when people are very young. How many of you graduated from kindergarten? You had a little ceremony, you had a little whatever. And uh, they're starting to make it almost every year, junior high graduation, then high school graduation, middle school graduation, all fourth grade graduation. And, uh, you know, the, and of course, the idea is that you've accomplished one thing and you're moving on to the other. You haven't accomplished everything, you've just accomplished something and you're moving on to the other. And uh, so this is one of those moments, I think, reflect on what you've accomplished and now moving on to the next. You graduate to the next or you're commencing, you're starting something else at a commencement service. He says, I have fought the good fight. And I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Um, how many have felt this year you have had to fight to stay here? It might be all kinds. It might be emotional fight, you know, fighting with your emotions to stay here. It might be a financial fight, you keep raising your money to be here. It might, uh, you know, be intellectual fighting. You know, this seems illogical. What am I doing here? Oh, that's right. God loved me here. And, um... Uh, he says, I've fought the good fight. You know, part of the good fight that, you, that we all fight is we fight to keep our faith strong even when circumstances tell us, you know what, why don't you just give up? Fighting the good fight, of course, a good fight is a fight that you win, right? The fight that you lose, you know, that wasn't a good one. <laughs> Fighting to keep your faith strong, and this is the same fight that you'll need to fight when you leave here. In the midst of storms and circumstances that may begin to surround you, say, you know what? 
my faith and my confidence and my commitment to Christ does not rest on circumstances. I built it on faith. And I'm going to keep my faith strong by keeping my heart drenched in God's Word. I'm going to fight to keep it strong because it won't be easy to keep it strong. It doesn't na come naturally. I finished the race. And uh, can I just pause here and say congratulations to, to you that are about to graduate. You know, you have finished the race. You, you're here. You stuck it out. You worked your hearts out. You prayed your faces out. It's one thing for me to say that. It's one thing for parents to clap. It's another thing what you hear when you hear those words. You don't know the half of it, pal. <laughs> because to other people that might say, oh, that honor academy program, oh, they're graduating. And you're like, do you realize what I just went through? <laughs> See, we give you a certificate and you can hang it on your wall, but it's way more than a piece of paper. That represents blood and sweat and love and mud and tears and it goes on and on and on. It is not simply a piece of paper and it's not just the physical things you did, it's the character that was built in that process. It's who you have become in the process that you take with you. You know, some of you wonder, are you going to be the person you were before you came? Or are you going to be the person that you are now? I would venture to say, the person that you are now is the real you. The real you is the one that's been healed. The one that's had your whole foundation kind of ripped out from underneath you and then rebuilt your foundation on God's Word if it wasn't there. The real you is the one that has... Real friends with real accountability. The real you is the one that you felt God speak to your heart. This is what you were born to do. And you're like, yes, I'm going to do it. That's the real you. The real you is the one that said no to sin and no to temptation and no to slacking and no to laying down and no to sleeping in your quiet times. You're the one that learned how to say no. You flex your spiritual muscle with the power of God, by the grace of God, not on your own flesh, but you found out how to tap into God's power to say no to the flesh and to say no to sin. That's the real you. Now go be the real you when you leave here. There's no question of who you really are. You're the one that's been redeemed and been made whole. That's got clarity and knows where you're going. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. You know, um, there's no words that I can say in terms of congratulations to you guys that have fought the good fight of faith and finished it. And uh, I hope that the ring that you wear, the honor ring, is not just a piece of metal around that gives you good sentiments of uh, and fond memories of the year that you were here. I hope that it's a reminder of the Goliath that you killed, mountains that you climbed, the perseverance that you would learn to, to have in your life, not just to... And, an easel or a retreat, but, a, but for life. You, you got that for life. Listen, if you can endure easel, you can endure anything. <laughs> and if you didn't endure easel, you learned how you could endure anything. Right? Because you go, oh, I can do more than that. I hope that your ring reminds you, you know, you always hear these wedding ceremonies. Don't let your ring be a shackle. Let it be a reminder of your eternal love and all this kind of stuff. But really and truly, the honor ring that you wear, you know, when I wear my wedding ring, I'm not thinking, oh, great, I got a wife. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, I'll stink. I can't go drinking tonight. I got a ring. I'm, remind I, I'm not thinking that. You know, I, I'm not thinking I'm shackled. I'm reminding you of what a great day my wedding was. What a great life I have together with my wife. I don't go home and see Katie go, you again, you know? <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm 
married. It's Katie. That's awesome. She's still alive. It reminds me of how my heart got smitten in the first place. And so I committed. And so you're honoring should help you, remind you of how your heart has been smitten by God. And, and as a result, we live a certain way, not because we're under rules or because we're going to get penalized or somebody's going to hold us accountable and they're going to mean to us and, you know, have curfew, but because we love Him so much, there's a standard that we want to live at to represent Him well in this world. So as you uh, think about leaving, can I just give you a couple of uh, words? Paul says here, the time has come for my departure. Maybe you're feeling that the time has come for my departure. From Team Mania, not from the war one, but the other. <laughs> and, um, and as you as you think about that, could I just frame a couple of thoughts for you? You finished this chapter well. You've taken on formidable odds and and Conquered many challenges. Now, it's a great way to begin your life. But your life isn't over yet. You finished the honor category, but you haven't finished life. You finished the honor category, but you haven't finished your calling yet. You finished the honor category, but you haven't finished your marriage yet. I haven't even started. <laughs> well, in your mind, you may have some of you. As of an hour from now. <laughs> you finished. You finished your year, but you haven't finished raising your kids yet. I mean, there's what you've begun to learn here is what so few in your generation have learned. That when you start something, you finish it. When you commit to something, you keep your word. In a generation, not just a young generation, but this whole world, replete with, you know, convenience, marriages, oh, you know, we're just not in love anymore, or we, you know, separate. Where they're changing vows, instead of till death do us part, they'll say, until as long as our love may last. When people sign prenups, just in case it doesn't work out, you stand distinctive as a very young adult who've learned what it means. When you keep your word, you, when you give your word, you keep it no matter how hard it is. And you prove that because you've been here all year and you've been faithful. 